Hi, Assalamualaikum and a very good morning. So now we are in chapter 4, Chemical Bonding. And now we are in the subtopic of 4.4 Intermolecular Forces of Attraction, part 1 of the video. So in this video, we're going to learn about the description for the intermolecular forces in which the intermolecular forces will be divided into two, which is the Van der Waals forces as well as the hydrogen bonding. So for the Van der Waals forces, it's going to be the dipole-dipole interaction or known as the permanent dipole. And they're going to be another type, which is the London forces or known as the dispersion forces, or sometimes they're going to be called as the London dispersion forces. Next, we're going to explain the factors that influence the strength of the Van der Waals forces. So for the linear outcome of A1 and B, we're going to look about that in this video, which is in part 1. Meanwhile, for the learning outcome of A2 and C, we're going to cover that in the next video, which is in part 2. So without any further ado, let us start with part 1 of the video first. So, intermolecular forces. So, intermolecular forces are basically talking about the attractive forces between the molecule. Okay, nama dia pun intermolecular forces. So, daya tarikan antara satu molecule dengan molecule yang lain dan dengan yang lain. And its strength of the forces will determine the physical properties of the substance. So, as mentioned, we are interested with the forces of the forces of attraction between the one molecule with another molecule. For example, HCl and HCl here. So, we are interested to study the intermolecular forces of attraction here. The covalent bond, we have covered that in the subtopic of 4.1 until 4.3. So, Covalent bond is generally stronger than the intermolecular attraction. And for the intermolecular forces, it can be divided into few types. So we have two types, which is the Van der Waals forces, and then we have the hydrogen bonding. And below the hydrogen and below the Van der Waals forces, it can be further divided into two, which is we have the dipole double forces and we have the London dispersion forces. And in comparison, the hydrogen bonding is going to be the stronger one in comparison to the dipole level forces and the London dispersion forces. And of course, if you were to, to compare with covalent bond, the covalent bond is a real bond. Okay, memang bond yang asal. However, intermolecular forces is the attractive daya tarikan. And for that reason, the covalent bond is going to be the strongest amongst the hydrogen bonding, dipole dipole or London dispersion forces. Alright? So now let us look into the dipole-dipole forces first. So dipole-dipole forces. So dipole-dipole forces arises from the attraction of the permanently positive and negative end of a neutral polar molecule. So for example, if we have our HCl here. So as what you know that the HCl here is a polar bond where the electronegativity is more towards the chlorine. So the electron density will move towards the chlorine small and this will create a bond dipole towards chlorine. And as a result, it will it's going to carry a partially positive charge on the hydrogen side and a partially negative charge on the chlorine side. And because of this reason, there is going to be a force of attraction between one hydrochloric acid molecule with another in which the negative charge and positive charge are going to attract one another and this will create a dipole dipole forces on this side here and this other side here. And of course, a more polar molecule will have a larger dipole moment has, and hence has a stronger dipole level forces. And then, because it is more polar, it will have a stronger dipole level and as a result, more energy is needed to overcome the strong dipole level forces, thus making boiling point increases. So in conclusion, the more polar the molecule, the stronger the dipole level forces, the higher the boiling point. So now, let us look into the example one here. The question asking, why does the acetaldehyde has a higher boiling point than the propane? So acetaldehyde will have a boiling point of 294 Kelvin. Meanwhile, the propane will have a boiling point of 231. So why is this happening? So for the other parameter, for example, the, for the molecular mass, the molecular mass is the same for both propane and acetaldehyde. What's different is at the dipole moment here. So as what you can see, the dipole moment of for the acetaldehyde will be higher 
in comparison to the uh, propane here. So you know that the acetaldehyde is a polar molecule. So acetaldehyde is a more polar molecule and has a stronger dipolar forces in comparison to propane. And as a result, more energy is needed to overcome the strong dipolar forces in acetaldehyde in comparison to the propane. And because of this, the boiling point of the acetaldehyde is going to be higher than the propane. Okay, and the dipole moment here refers to the mu. The similar thing that what you have learned in uh, subtopic of 4.2 part 3. So the higher the dipole moment, the more polar is the molecule. Alright, now we're going to move on to the next uh, attractive forces of the van der Waal. So the next van der Waal forces that we're going to look at is the London dispersion forces. So the London dispersion forces is basically a weak temporary force. Dia hanyalah sementara. Kalau dipole double forces, it is a permanent dipole from a positive charge and negative charge. But for this one, it is a weak temporary. Okay, and it occurs between the non-polar molecule, and it can also happens in polar molecule. Alright, and because of this, it can exist in all atoms and molecule, whether polar or non-polar. Semuanya boleh berlaku. Alright, and the force arises because electron in an atom or a molecule are in, in, are in the constant motion. So, electron to sentiasa bergerak. So, the first question that we need to ask ourselves, how does the London dispersion forces arises? So, an atom, sebenarnya satu atom, will have a positively charged proton inside the nucleus. And what's surrounding the nucleus is the electrons. And on average, we can say that the negative charge of the atoms will be spread evenly around the nucleus. Okay, so secara logiknya, kita ada nucleus, positive charge, and we have electron surrounding the nucleus. So in, so in a mere saying, we can say that in average, the electrons are evenly distributed. However, at certain point, at any instant, one side of the molecule has a higher electron density than the other side. Okay, so seolah-olah, so dekat satu moment, bila elektron tu sentiasa bergerak, at, bila kamu berhentikan masa, pop, you will see that some of the some of the side will have more electron than the other. So because one side has more electron than the other side, thus, this will create a temporary, sementara, a partially negative charge on one side and a partially positive charge on the other side. Okay? And this is due to the uneven distribution of electron. And this will create the atoms to be a temporary dipole. And this temporary dipole, yang dah terhasil tadi, dia boleh induce, dia boleh menggalakkan lagi satu atom yang neutral, for example, like this. Ini yang dah diinduce. Alright. So it have a partially negative charge and a partially positive charge. And as a result, it will cause the negative charge of the ad another atom or molecule to be attracted on this side as well. Okay, because it have a partially positive charge and then the, all the electron will be carried toward this side. And as a result, this area will become positively charged. So it happens at certain time. Okay, and this is the meaning of induce, dia menggalakkan penarikan elektron dari atom ataupun molecule yang lain. So, temporary dipole and induce type. Okay? And as a result, this interaction here will be known as the London dispersion forces and only significant hanya akan berkesan atau hanya akan terbukti boleh berlaku when the atoms or the molecule are close enough to get the kalau jarak ni terlalu jauh London dispersion forces will not happen all right now we're going to look into example number 1 so for example number 1 we need to state the types of intermolecular forces that exist between each of the following molecules so we have the HBr here and then we have the sulfur dioxide as well as we have the methane so the first thing that we need to do is we need to be able to draw the Lewis structure of the molecule and this need to happen based on the Vesper theory. 
in which this thing you have covered that in the subtopic of 4.2 part 3. Okay, so for the structure of HBR, the Lewis structure that you're going to get is to be something like this, which is HBR here. And as what you know that, the bromine atom is going to be more, electro more electronegative in comparison to the hydrogen. So when the electronegativity is, dif is different from one another, uh, the, ele the electron distribution is going to be asymmetrical, where the more electron is going to go towards the bromine side, and as a result, they're going to produce a bond dipole here. So you know that when there's a bond dipole that existed towards the right-hand side and there's no bond dipole to cancel out, so you know that the dipole moment is not equal to zero and hence it is a polar molecule. So uh, for the polar molecule, it's going to have a dipole-dipole forces in between HBr molecule to another. And also, they're going to have a London dispersion forces because London dispersion forces can happen in the polar molecule as well as in the, in the non-polar molecule. So London dispersion forces will happen in all atoms or molecule, regardless it is polar or non-polar. So semuanya akan ada London dispersion forces. So for HBr, the dispersion forces will also exist between the HBr molecule. Now, we're going to do the same process again for the sulfur dioxide. So when we draw the Lewis structure for the sulfur dioxide, we're going to get the structure to be something like this. So we have SO and O with a band shape. And as you know, the oxygen is going to be the more electronegative atom and the sulfur is going to be electropositive. And the oxygen here is going to be electronegative as well. So they're going to be a bond dipole towards the oxygen atom similarly on the right hand side here. So when there is a bond dipole going to the left and going to the right at certain angle, a resultant bond dipole gonna be produces straight down here. And as a result, there, there are gonna be no bond dipole going upwards. So you know that the mu will not equal to zero. When it is not equal to zero, then it is a polar molecule. So, you can say that the sulfur dioxide is a polar molecule. So, when there is a polar molecule, a dipole-dipole forces can be formed because it has a permanent negative charge and a permanent positive charge. So, they can, it can form dipole-dipole forces from one s auto molecule with another. And of course, they're also going to have a dispersion forces between the s auto molecule. Now, we're going to do for the CH4. So when you draw the Lewis structure for CH4, you're going to get to be something like this, which is CH, 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 and CH here. And the CH bond here is a non-polar bond. They adalah tidak polar. Kerana electronegativity carbon dengan hydrogen adalah terlalu, uh, perbezaannya adalah terlalu kecil. And as a result, the CH bond here is a non-polar bond. So there's not going to be any dipole moment or any bond dipole, so your mu here is equal to zero, and hence it is a non-polar molecule. So since it is a non-polar molecule, it can only have a dispersion forces between the CH4 molecule with another CH4 molecule. Alright, so it is as simple as that. Now we're going to look into the factors that affecting the van der Waal forces. So there are three factors. First is the molecular size or the molecular weight. Second, we have the molecular shape. And third, we have the molecular polarity. So for the molecular size, when the molecular size increases, it means that there's going to be a higher number of electrons. So when the number of electrons increases, it means that the valence electrons are getting further and further away from the nucleus and it can be distorted easily. Lagi mudah dia nak form or in use dipole moment with the next molecule. And as a result, the polarizability of the molecule increases. So the higher the polarizability, the stronger is the van der Waal forces. So example as what you can see here. So we have a noble gases across group 18. So started, starting with helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon, and radon. So going down the group, 
the boiling point started to increase. Okay, and this is because the molecular weight semakin lama semakin berat and bila molecular weight makin meningkat, the number of electron will also increases. And you can say that the number of electron increases and the atomic radius getting larger and larger and larger, right? So it's going to be distorted quite easily because the distance between the nucleus and electron are very, very far apart. And hence, the polarizability of the molecule increases, like it's enough, they're not induced like both. And as a result, a stronger dispersion forces, where dispersion forces adalah di bawah Bandewell forces, to be higher. And as a result, more energy is needed to break the force of attraction. Thus, the boiling point increases down the group. The next factor that we're going to look at is the molecular shapes. So, for the molecular shape, the long and the linear molecule can develop a bigger temporary dipole due to the large surface area which enable the movement of electron. In comparison to short L and branch molecule containing the same number of electron. Maksudnya, long and linear molecule lebih baik untuk induce the temporary dipole. Okay, kenapa? Because long and linear molecule can lie closer together thus allow the greater contact between the molecule, thus give rise to a greater London dispersion forces in comparison to a more compaction. And as a result, this attraction are more effective if the molecules are really close together. So as what you can see here, let's say if you have a linear molecule. So when you have the linear molecule, the electron is going to be on this region here. Meanwhile, if you are having a branch molecule, for example, if you were to expand this structure, you're going to get it to be something like this. Like a, this region here. So when they are uh, when they are in a small compact area, it is very very difficult to induce another bond dipole at, or induce a force of attraction with another molecule in comparison to the long linear because in long and linear you can put it in any direction and you have a larger surface area in comparison to the compact and a small packaging here. So this shape here, which is a linear, will provide a greater contact between the molecule and thus can induce the dipole more easily. Okay, and as a result, it will have a higher boiling point in comparison to the 2 metal propane. Okay, and for the reasoning here, you can say that the butane and the 2 metal butane has a similar molecular weight or the molar mass. So molar mass diorang lebih kurang sama sahaja. Tetapi, the butane will have a higher boiling point because it is a linear alkene, alkene yang selari. And because it is a linear, it will have a larger surface area of contact, thus having a stronger dispersion process in comparison to the two metal propane. Alright? Now we're going to look into the last factor, which is the molecular polarity. So this one is very easy. So the vendor forces between the polar molecule akan lebih kuat berbanding the non-polar molecule. Okay? Because you know that the, di the dipole level forces is stronger than the London dispersion forces. So kamu tengok saja, man satu polar, man satu non-polar. So polar molecule will have a higher boiling point. Okay? So as what you can see here, uh, both molecules will have identical number of electron and almost similar molecular mass. Hanya beza satu gram per mole sahaja. Okay, but in the fluoromethane, it it adopt a polar molecule. Pasal, there's gonna be a strong electron negativity from the fluorine, and hence the electron distribution will go towards the fluorine more in comparison to the carbon here. And as a result, a bond dipole is going to be created between um, fluorine, between carbon and fluorine here. And as a result, mu is not equal to zero, and hence the, it is a polar molecule because dipole moment is not cancelled out. Okay? And 
the fluoromethane, as you know, that will have a stronger dipolar bubble forces because it is a polar molecule. For the non-polar molecule, it will only adopt London dispersion forces. Right? And as what you know, more energy is needed to break the strong dipolar bubble forces, and hence the boiling point of the fluoromethane is going to be higher than ethane. Okay? So I think that's all for today's video. See you again some other time. Bye.